love goes where it ought to go, but sometimes, the players behind the love console could face lots of influence from these coaches. The story of a happily married Deborah and her poor husband, Hans, is a typical example of the rich versus the poor marriage. Hans was born to poor parents in the city of Technica a few meters away from Mad Ida, where Deborah who comes from a generally sustainable family. They were not regarded as the part of the echelons of high society in Mad Ida. As a result of that much was expected from Deborah in terms of her choice of a partner, but it turned out that her choice wasn't the best. Hans wakes up from bed to see Deborah all alone in the couch in their single room, staring solemnly at the ceiling looking so dejected. Debbie, why are you all alone in the couch? He asked softly. She looked at him and took her eyes off with her lips stiffed up. He walks to her in the couch and tries to touch her, but her body language and her movement clearly indicates that she was not in the mood for a conversation. Debbie, what's wrong? Why does it seem you are moving away from me? Hans, you know how much I love you, but I don't think that this is the time for us to talk. Honestly, I've got a lot running on my mind, she mutters. Debbie, you know how much I love you, whatever it is, as my wife, we must communicate to find a solution. Darling, don't leave me in the dark. Leave you in the dark, you know our marriage didn't go as planned. It's already two years. My other family members would be coming to the annual family reunion with the latest cars, their kids and all, but ask yourself, how are we going? He shakes his head in disbelief with all the joy vanishing from his face. He sighs heavily and moves back a bit away from her. Well, Debbie, know this, no condition is permanent and soon we shall be out of this poverty. He looks at the grumpy wall clock and it's already 6 a.m. in the morning. He moves straight to the bathhouse. As he is bathing, there is a knock on their door. Who could that be? They all wondered as he employs Debbie to go and attend to the door. Debbie opens the door and lo, and behold it's Mr. and Mrs. Adams, Debbie's parents. Debbie's face is lit with a mixed feelings of happiness and disappointment knowing very well how weird her mom could behave. They are already clad in their beautiful garments, ready to make the journey together with their in-law. Mrs. Adams asks where her poverty-stricken husband was, and she pointed to the bathhouse, where her husband was having his shower. Mrs. Adams walked around the room checking the drawers in search of God only knows what she alone was searching for. Mr. Adams on the hand, just sat quiet in the couch as her daughter brought him a warm coffee and some donuts to wash it down. What are you searching for Gladys? You are well aware this is not your house, he asked his wife, Gladys Adams. You are aware there's nothing exciting in this room to search for. Just looking at what he has been feeding my stubborn daughter with. Oh, if Debbie had not been in love, I'm sure I would have been roaming in some luxurious house and not this brothel, she said. Hans comes out of the bathhouse and much to his surprise were his in-laws, Mr. and Mrs. Adams. Looking confused, he extended a hi to them, but his mother-in-law refused to respond, leaving his father-in-law with an option to respond and ask how his family was faring. They excused him and headed outside. Hans was really surprised at her mother-in-law's behavior, and it seemed her daughter had noticed it. Don't get too much offended, you know she's like that. Just get dressed and let's go. He gets dressed and puts some boxes in a rubber bag and they head out. When they get out, he found his father-in-law working on his car. He offered to help, but his mother-in-law looked at him scornfully and sucked her teeth at him, complaining to her daughter that if only she had listened to him and married someone from a rich home, this wouldn't have happened. This made Debbie's day grow from sad to worse. She keeps mute and swallows her saliva as she watches her mother rant all about. She looks at her watch and realized they were getting late. Hans, don't you think it is time you got a taxi to take us to the airport so we can quickly get to the reunion? You know I don't like to get stressed under the scorching sun and looking at the scenario here. It seems you're not a mechanic and you can't fix your in-law's car. I guess it is even a shame for you to attempt to go to a big family reunion in your in-law's car. She spoke sarcastically. Hans didn't say a word. He turned to the direction of his wife, Debbie as if to get some support. But she also turned away her eyes from him leaving him all alone in that hot soup being prepared by her mother. Hans, we are getting late and if we don't take care you might ruin your nearly sewn garment. Let us go by bus since I know very well, you can't afford to pay for the plane tickets, and besides booking tickets on such a short notice would be very expensive. So don't worry. 
Grandpa will understand and he's just interested in our presence and the fact that the CEO of the Bide Corp has informed that he will be around this year since his son. My uncle promised to bring him around especially after coming to know that we are all family. Hans was dumbfounded but kept his composure so as not to disrespect anyone. When they set off and got out of the compound, one of the extended family members, Jonathan, who was very successful and single was riding in the latest luxurious car. Upon reaching there, he stopped his car and quickly, Gladys rushed into the front seat. If you want more stories subscribe and hit the notification button for more video.